Hey everybody, welcome back here to A Place to Heal. And today, I wanna to talk to you about bugs. I know, not the best thing on the planet, but hey, it's gotta be talked about. Cause like three days ago, I was talking to one of my girlfriends on the phone and we got into this whole conversation about bugs and parasites and intestinal worms and everything. And she's like, oh man, you have so got into a video on this. And she goes, why have you not done a video on this? And I was like, you know, I haven't done a video on this. And it is very important. I had someone else um, contact me and said, hey, can intestinal parasites mess with my blood sugar levels? Yes, to a certain extent it can. And to a certain extent, they can even kill you. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I know a few detoxification specialists who say, get these little pills, do a 10 day cleanse, and you're good on the bugs. I've heard other people in the health industry, in the alternative health industry, um, the natural path industry, suggest that as long as you clean up the terrain, the bugs will see themselves out by themselves. Okay, so I'm gonna totally disagree with the first idea that all you have to do is 10 days worth of a parasite cleanse and you're going to be good. That is ludicrous. I mean, totally insane and ridiculous. I don't even believe in that for one second. I do somewhat agree with the second person that says that you do have to clean up this terrain, which you do. I mean, you know, you can't feed garbage. You just can't. But I agree that that only works to a certain extent because follow me here. If you've ever, I mean, we've all, we all know roaches. We don't really know parasites that well, but we all do know roaches and we do know sugar ants. A lot of us have had to deal with these all over the United States. But here's the problem. As long as there is one little teeny drop of water for those ants to drink off of, or those roaches um, to live off of, they're gonna stick around. If there is one little crumb of food, that will keep them going for weeks. So I do agree that you do need to clean up the train. I mean, you can't keep giving these things cookies and junk and everything else and expect them to leave. So yes, the cleaner the terrain is, the less parasites that you're going to have, but you are still going to have parasites because as long as you are still feeding them something, they are going to exist in your system. Even after we die, I know it's a morbid thought, follow me here, even after we die, the ants will feed off of us. There's something to feed on. So they're going to exist. So to sit there and think, I can do a 10 day parasite cleanse, they're gonna go away, or I can just do this once or twice and it's all gonna be good, that's not gonna happen. And there's so many, many different kinds of parasites. People think, okay, liver flukes, <clears throat> it's one of the most popular ones, or ringworm, or, you know, pinworms, or stuff like that, and they think, oh, these, are... but there's some that are so minute, and they live in your brain, and some will live in the cavities in your teeth, and live on off the sugar. <laughs> I mean, it's unbelievable, the stuff that is living within us and on us. So we live on the same plane as dogs, cats, horses, chickens, wild birds, and they all have parasites. Chickens have horrible parasites. They have to be dusted and cleaned up. I know my birds, I was constantly having to deal with the parasite problem um, in my aviaries when I was breeding exotic parrots. Um, chickens, ducks. Ducks are horrible parasite carriers. Dogs, they get fleas, they get ticks, they get intestinal worms. Same with cats. Why do you think you're the exception? We get them too. And just because you're vegan or vegetarian or eat healthier does not mean that you're any less exempt because there are very minute parasites that are carried in on 
the leaves of lettuce and fruits and everything else. So yes, we are ingesting them too. So it's very important that we keep an eye on this, a very close eye, because it can get away from you. Because a lot of people come to me and they say, well, Marie, I have this autoimmune disease. You know, I have lupus or I have especially leaky gut. That's one of my favorites. Leaky gut or all this. Well, you know, this is a closed end system. Whatever goes in through your mouth should not exit anywhere until it leaves your anus. Anywhere. I mean, it's supposed to be like a perfect closed system. When you put plumbing in your house, you make sure and you put the little goop around all the attachments because you want nothing leaving. You want nothing dripping. Well, it's the same in our system. And whatever ex enters here should not exit until it exits there. But what's happening is we're inviting these parasites in. We're eating meats that um, have parasites parasites in them, we're eating leafy greens that have parasites in them, we're, you know, we're eating fish that are loaded with parasites. You can pull fishes out of the lake and slice them open and you can watch the little worms all over the place. You know, I mean, they're in everything. I had a girlfriend the other day tell me, I saw this um, thing on the Nature Channel and they had captured this, I think it was an eagle or an owl. And they put a close-up on it and you can see all the parasites underneath their tongue. And I was like, I'm telling you, we are a parasitic fun ground for these things because we have the perfect environment. We're warm, we're wet, we're, um, you know, I mean, it's like, come on in, hey, feast. And the more junk that you have in your colon, of course, the more feast that they're going to have. So what ends up happening is these things set up in your colon. Some of these um, parasites, some of these liver flukes can live in your liver and your colon seven, eight to 10 years. They get rather large. I've pulled out some that are about the size of my thumb. They've been pretty gross and they look like grubs. They're huge. So what happens is as they grow, they start clogging up your bile ducts, um, your liver ducts, your pancreatic ducts, and everything else. And as they get bigger, um, there's less fluid, especially like liver bile that can flow through there. And you need that liver bile. And as they get bigger and bigger, and you have less and less liver bile, they love it because liver bile, they hate liver bile. Liver bile kills them, but they love living in there because now they've blocked all your, your ducts off. There's no bile flowing. They're loving life in there. So that's great, except that these things, just like you eat and you defecate, they eat and they defecate. So they start defecating inside your system and they start causing this horrible poison within your system and bacteria and everything else that when they're defecating, when they're defecating inside of your colon. Another problem that happens is they have, if you've ever seen, especially liver flukes, they're like horrible, um, they have big teeth for such little boogers and they cling and they will literally eat there for a while and then they let go. Well, when they let go, um, you have a tendency to have little bits of blood because you now have an open sore and they will let go. They will move to another area and they will cling on. And what ends up happening with this is as they're clinging, letting go, clinging, letting go, they're causing minute pinholes in your colon and stuff, which now causes, you got it, leaky gut. Because now we are no longer a closed in system. As the junk is going in that we're eating and it's digesting with all the juices and the hydrochloric acid and everything else that it needs to, and as it's starting to hit the colon, it's leaking out into your bloodstream. Well, now you've got these toxins in your body and your body is going, whoa, we're being attacked. And guess what the body does? Autoimmune. We got to attack back. So now because your own body is attacking itself. So it's very important that these things be taken out 
not completely because it's not going to happen, but at least you've got to get them under control because as these things burrow these holes and the junk is getting out, they're going to defecate. And now their feces is getting out into your bloodstream. Are you catching the picture here? It just gets really, really bad. And that's why there's so many of you out there that are so sick because I get calls all the time and it's like, Marie, I'm just so sick. And then there's some of you, I had a lady not too long ago that called me up and she says, I, I went to go get a colonic. I did two colonics and it was the most painful thing I've ever experienced in my life. But during the colonics, the woman actually stopped the flow of liquid and she says, see that? See that? Look at the size of that parasite. Well, let me tell you, and I know you guys are going to think, wow, she's really lost her marbles now, but I'm not the only one that has said this. I have talked to other people, and if you have felt it too, please comment and join me in my insanity. Um, when you're killing these parasites off, you can almost feel it. I mean, it's like you are one with them. There's been a lot of studies done. You can actually get a book called Parasite Rex which um, if you kind of have a queasy stomach, don't. But it goes into the life of a parasite cycle and what they have a tendency to do and everything else. And these parasites literally will take over their host. And one of the things that I always remembered about this book is parasites will always expand their host. Please repeat that self, repeat that to yourself because it's very important. Parasites will always expand their host, which means that, um, I want to get into this a little bit. I know it's not going to be a short video. Sorry. Um, some of the, like when they went into the ocean and they looked at the crabs, they found out that like the really skinny crabs, when they opened them up and they dissected them, they had no parasites inside. But then they found these crabs that had like huge stomachs. And when they opened them up, they were loaded with parasites. So they found that the parasite will always expand the host. Rats that were full, full of parasites had bigger stomachs than the rats that don't. So when you see somebody walking down the street and they're not pregnant and their stomach is out to here and they tell you, well, I'm not really a beer drinker and it's not a beer belly, you can rest assured that those are going to be parasites that are living because they have expanded the host. Another thing that they found out is that these parasites once they are living inside the host they learn about the host and they can actually manipulate the host um one thing that is unheard of is silverfish silverfish would never come up to the top of the ocean or the water i'm sorry because they glitter so as they glitter you know seagulls can eat them and everything. so you don't want to be eaten we have a survival mechanism every animal has this survival mechanism it's our number one thing that's instilled in us is you know we have to survive and they found out that the silverfish that were actually at the top of the water and they would vibrate and they would shimmer because they wanted to be eaten because the minute that the seagull would pick them up take them in the parasite could then continue the life cycle in the gut of the seagull. So they found out that the ones that were on top of the water and they would shimmer were the ones that were loaded with parasites. There was not a single one <laughs> that was stupid enough to come up to the top if they did not have parasites. And why? Because the parasite was making them do that. So at one point they thought, well, this is insanity. A parasite can't actually cause their host to do something crazy like that. But then they went further into their research and they found out that there's the when a parasite takes over an ant, these ants usually will always stay within their colonies. Well, the ants that actually had parasites in them would go out and they would climb a blade of grass and they would sit, they would leave their colony, which is like unheard of, and they would actually sit on the very, very top of that blade of grass. And they would wait and wait and wait for hours till the sun went down until a cow came along and ate them so they can go into the stomach of the cow. So that was another weird thing. Well, then they started thinking, well, maybe we're not so crazy. Then they started testing it out in crabs and the same thing happened. These crabs that were loaded with the parasites 
were the ones that were most likely to walk away from the shoreline in order to get eaten by the seagulls. So it changes the way you behave. And I, I've known a lot of people that once they've um, gotten away from the parasites, their whole demeanor has changed. They, they don't act the same way. They don't behave the same way because they're no longer being controlled by the parasites. And one thing that I tell people, it's like, oh, I crave that sugar. I just got to have a cookie. I've got to have a cookie. And I'm like, that's not you craving that cookie. That is your peeps craving the cookies. I always call them my peeps. And they crave and they will make you crazy wanting that damn cookie until they force you to have that cookie and a, and they actually can make you do a lot of crazier things that you would never normally do because they're now in control and the more of them that you have and the bigger that they are the more they're going to be in control and just a little side note here those boogers have between six and seven hundred babies a day so just a heads up they're like roaches. You don't take care of them. They're going to multiply and they're going to take over your whole entire living area. Um, I want to make sure I hit everything on this list. So there's a lot of things that you can take. I like to do a parasite cleanse once a week. I pick one day a week and I do something, anything, anything is better than nothing but you also need to remember if you haven't done a parasite cleanse if you've never done a parasite cleanse if you're very very sick please remember to go slowly on these i always tell everybody please go slowly on parasite cleanses and here's the reason when you kill these things inside your body you're going to have carcasses inside your body there's going to be die off and these things are going to make you very ill until they completely exit the colon and then you'll feel better but just remember once you kill them they don't just die and vanish they you kill them now you have dead bodies and those dead bodies are going to have to travel down your colon until they exit and until they do that bacteria all those that nasty dead bodies are going to make you very sick so please take it very easy on these now there's a bunch of stuff you can do there's um a, po a pozote tea it's e-p-a-z-o-t-e tea that you can take it kills parasites oil of oregano has is also a great parasite killer you can take a little shot glass add um, two or three drops. I probably wouldn't add more than two drops. It's very potent stuff and you drink it and parasites absolutely hate it. There's papaya. You can take papaya pills or just papaya. I, I do papaya smoothies at least once a week. They hate papaya. I don't know what it's in papaya. You can also scrape um, the seeds, the papaya seeds, the little round seeds in there and you can dry them out and just pop them in your mouth um, or you can just swallow a spoonful uh, papaya seeds also kill parasites um, they have demitomaceous earth which you can also put in water or you can use in smoothies that will also kill parasites pumpkin seeds something really simple you just get some raw pumpkin seeds and you eat some pumpkin seeds like I said easy don't take the whole you know do like a little bit at a time and then see how you feel you know because the more parasites you have the more you're going to kill the sicker you're going to be um frozen castor oil pills if you don't know how to do that check out my videos um there's a frozen castor oil regimen that i do and i usually do it on sundays you freeze castor oil pills they're very hard to find just go online they, you can get them on amazon or whatever and you freeze them you have to freeze them for two weeks and when they're nice and frozen solid then you pop them they won't give you diarrhea they don't make you go crazy nothing like that they kill parasites at the very end of your colon near the ezekiel valve, where the bigger ones are standing and hanging out waiting for the food to drop out of the canal <laughs> you know, it's like, i always picture the little crabs going come on come on come on 
<laughs> every time I think of those. Anyway, um, so you can do that. I, you could pop five pills before bed. It's pretty simple. And the next morning, you know, you've killed a whole bunch of parasites. Um, coconut butter. I just recently did a video with Trey um, on coconut butter. And coconut butter is great to kill those parasites in the liver flukes in your stomach. Coffee enemas. Liver flukes hate coffee enemas. It's one of the quickest, easiest, and safest ways to get rid of those liver flukes out of your liver extremely fast, especially if you're really, really sick. Um, garlic enemas. Please, please, if you don't hear any of this video, listen to this. Do not put garlic into an enema. Okay, look up the recipe online. You actually have to take the garlic clove, put it into water, and you infuse the water with garlic. You never put garlic into your colon. So you're just using the garlic water. That, and I normally, I don't agree with garlic, but I think garlic is a parasite killer. It's not something you wanna eat every day. It's toxic to your body. It crosses the blood brain barrier, but it is excellent in killing parasites if used correctly. Um, wormwood combination is a great pill to take. It usually says to take two in the morning, two at night. I don't suggest that when you're first starting out. Two before bed and it's unreal. That's, it's, it's got like walnuts in it and everything else, but it will kill parasites. It's a, it's one of my favorite pills to kill parasites better than anything else that's out there and it's called wormwood combination the lady that invented it has now passed away but they still sell the pills and it's great um there's also powder arco powder arco is excellent if you drink it or if you do it in an enema form recipes are also online just look powder arco enemas powder arco is I mean, it cures a slew of ailments. It's one of the best herbs out there. The only thing that I found, here I am, I'm gonna sound crazy again. Um, one of the things that I found with Pau de Arco is that when I would do the enema, it, I would be okay for about five minutes and then I could feel the death starting and I could feel these parasites dying off and it was, Oh my God, so painful. And I was literally, how do I explain this? I was literally, literally going through the trauma that they were going through. And then after about three minutes, it was like, it's over, it's over. And I've talked to other people who've expressed the same thing. They're like, oh yeah, I've, I've felt that. Or after I'm done, I'm exhausted because I felt all of them dying and I'm just exhausted. So, you know, it's kind of a mental brain screw <laughs> with you when you're doing stuff like that. But I mean, it's definitely worth it because you don't want this stuff taking over. And like I said, some of you are extremely sick and they parasites will kill you. I mean, a lot of people say, no, they can't, they can. They're big enough. They clog up your bile ducts enough. They will stop your bile flow enough they will kill you. They get into your pancreas, they start messing with your sugar enough, they will kill you. They get into your lungs, they get into your brains, they will kill you. And a story that I don't share too often, I've only shared with a handful of people, is when I had my pneumonia and I was in the hospital and I ended up um, being rushed to emergency surgery because they had to put tubes in my lungs and they actually went in and cut underneath my breast to put the tubes in. And here I was, I look like some court, some kind of Borg. <laughs> you guys watch any sci-fi. When I was done, I was like, whoa, what the hell? And there was these plastic things. You nurses know what I'm talking about. And the tubes were pumping um, the fluid out of my lungs. I had been a smoker for a very long time, so the fluid was kind of yellowish. And at one point, about the third day that I was pumping fluid, I looked down at the one container, and here's this worm, about this long, just dripping down the front of the container. 
And I called the nurse and I just kind of looked at her and I'm like, is that a worm? Oh my God, that's a worm. And she's like, look at it. She's like, oh, that is a worm. <laughs> and we're like freaking out because you can see the head. You can see the tail. It was just disgusting. And she calls the doctor and the doctor comes in. And of course, he looks at me and he says, you've been watching too many sci-fi movies. <laughs> that's not a worm. It was a worm. And it was in my lung. And he can't tell me different because... I know what a worm looks like. It was disgusting. But these worms get into your lungs. And I'm not the only one that's ever pulled a worm out of their lung. You know, um, they get into your brain and everything else. So if you do nothing else for your body, try at least just pick any. I mean, any of those things. Some of the stuff is really super simple, like pumpkin seeds or coconut butter. Some of the stuff is a little bit more intricate, you know, like the powder arco enemas or the garlic enemas. But every little bit helps. And just like you deworm your dog and just like you deworm your cats every so often, you need to do it for yourself. I do it once a week. I pick one, any. Even if I'm out, I'm like, let me just grab some pumpkin seeds. You know, let me do some killing you know so please keep that in mind and like I said the sicker you are the more that you need to do this all right guys I, I've spoken enough it's late here I'm going to bed and I've got 150 other things I need to do so till next time stay happy stay healthy do some exterminating and do some eviction and get rid of those peeps because you don't want them in your environment screwing with your mind, your lungs, your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, or anything else in between and allowing that garbage to enter your system that should never be there. All right, till next time, bye.